Given the reports we're getting that, uh, that Saudi Arabia might be mulling a statement about this being a botched interrogation, I mean, that still doesn't sound very good to me. Where would it go from here if we see a statement like that? Well, it's not good, but at least it's a, a Saudi narrative that's out there that makes sense, that provides at least some sort of excusability. What, what I think wasn't good was for more than a week standing by a story that absolutely nobody believed that he walked into the Saudi consulate in Istanbul and walked out through a back door, and by the way, the cameras weren't working, and there's no sign of him. Get, you know, does it really a, give there's... John? Does it really give them any excusability? It's still a, a pretty uh, shocking admission, particularly having tried to cover their own tracks over the last two weeks. There would still be pretty severe calls, uh, I would imagine, from uh, European allies and from Congress for the president to do some, to, to, no, to put in some form of punishment. There will be a response if what they do is, is they lay out a, a line of argument that says there were all these things that were concerning, there were all these ties to extremists. I think that at least would, would get people to stop and consider and begin to enter into negotiations, discussions. I think there will be a response and there should be a response if that's what happened. But there's a lot that we don't know. And we also don't know how much of what's been reported actually turns out to be true and how much isn't. Friends who've been uh, accused of, of being spies in the Turkish press, friends of mine, can tell you all sorts of stories about the Turkish press having its own set of excesses. So I think we, we are perhaps at a turning point in this. It has been growing and growing and growing for 10 days, and that's really slammed the Saudis. Carter, I want to get your thoughts on uh, the potential impact to the defense sector here. I realize there's a lot of ifs. We still have this investigation that needs to play out and see what the Saudis have to say uh, and the results of those investigations, et cetera. But given the comments from President Trump that he doesn't necessarily want to, you know, put, put a hold on those potential foreign military sales to Saudi Arabia because of the potential jobs impact, and of course, I think the other argument would go, uh, the fact that more sales drive down costs for us here in terms of weaponry. Uh, what's your take on this? Is he uh, right? I think the latter, uh, yeah, I mean, the latter part of what you said I think is exactly right. So, you know, it, it, we can do a lot to push defense stocks around, and you could add uh, this to the list of, of things that, that folks have, have worried about for this group, uh, I'd say year to date, which is kind of weight on performance. But if you start assigning probabilities to canceling weapons purchases, I think it, it's, it's an extremely low probability and, and frankly close to zero. I mean, there's, from a national security standpoint, it doesn't make a lot of sense because uh, you're putting U.S. Uh, weaponry on the, the opposite side of the Gulf from Iran and, and the Saudis are the biggest export market in the world. Uh, but when you start thinking about purchases at home, I mean, you take, for example, Boeing just got awarded the, the Air Force Trainer Program, TX, you know, a week ago, uh, and those prices have been hailed as being, being low and good for the Air Force. But part of the reason those prices are low is because you get good overhead absorption in the factory in St. Louis where they're making F-15s for the Saudis. So you go start taking these things away, there will yeah. be all sorts of repercussions uh, that are then very tough to stomach for the industrial base. Okay, quickly, before I let both of you go, Carter, I have to get your thoughts on the other defense news of the, of the day, and that is this merger of equals between Harris and L3. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's a fantastic transaction. It, it's one uh, that I think uh, the industry has thought would, would make a lot of sense uh, in the years past, but, you know, you need to get over the, you know, the kind of social hurdles to, to get a deal like this done. Uh, it's the biggest deal we've ever seen in the defense industry. It'll have a lot of synergies. Uh, it'll create uh, an entity that uh, is very technologically focused. You know, the DOD is leaning much more towards uh, sensor fusion and small, uh, rapidly deployable capabilities as opposed to big platforms. That will be their wheelhouse. And I think uh, for this deal, it is, it is not a, yeah. a last move. It's a first move uh, and really okay. makes for a very attractive combination.